But the key thing for the Rosicrucians is that these patterns, everything in the world comes directly from the one, from the mind of God. And then to be able to actually discern the different qualities and functions of things in the manifest world, including things like the different spiritual beings that everyone is connected to all the time, and to become conscious of those and how they affect us, there would be teachings hidden within geometric glyphs. Because again, the geometric glyph holds pure pattern information. It's a packed thought form from the mind of God of a pure pattern. So the tree of life holds a tremendous amount of embedded information. There are 22 paths connecting the 10 spheres on the tree of life. That's an aspect that's within the tree of life that actually shows us the coding pattern of anchors for energy in the human body for the human consciousness within three points of the astral body, for the human life body within seven points, and then for the human physical body within 12 locations. Just as in Chinese medicine, it's described there are 12 primary meridians. So these numbers are related to functions and the pattern from the mind of God. A huge amount is embedded in these and different teachers can focus on completely different things from the same pattern because it's holographic. It's like a jewel and different facets of all these different things. So if we take a look at what we're looking at tonight, there's another pattern that's laid within the tree of life which is that it has three different pillars inside of it. Now the three pillars have an interesting quality to them. On the left and the right hand pillars, which are sometimes referred to in the West as the pillars of mercy and severity, they don't go all the way up or all the way down. The only one that goes all the way up and all the way down is the central or the middle pillar. And this is related to a, a very deep teaching of how to discern three different types of spiritual forces or actually three different types of spiritual beings in the classical tradition. Now unfortunately this idea of discerning three different types of spiritual beings was primarily lost over time so that in most external Western churches today it's not taught anymore unfortunately because it was in the original tradition and instead things are presented only as like there's the good spiritual beings and the bad spiritual beings. Well, the problem is, as we are created from the Godhead, the first movement from the one is into the two. It's like the first split of the egg in the mother's womb to be the two different parts that will then split to become the full manifest human being. So that split into two is actually taking the unified aspect of the Godhead, the one, and moving into two opposite polarities. In the Indian tradition, they talk about this being Shiva and Shakti these archetypal yin and yang, masculine and feminine aspects. Now this is absolutely critical because you can't say that one is good and one is bad. You can't have a purely polarized system and say that's good, that's bad. If we have male and female, which one's good and which one's bad? But this type of thinking infects everything in the Western world today, like our politics. Well, if this side is right, that side must be wrong sort of thing. Everything is brought into this polarized dichotomy. But the original understanding was much different. If we study classical teachings like in Tibetan Buddhism, they talk about, you know, the path of development is not to one extreme or another. It's the middle way. It's that central path, holding a balance between two different extremes. And so the same thing is true on the tree of life. We have a middle path, just like the Tibetans talk about, and then things can go off balance to one extreme or another. You know, do you want to be too hot or too cold? You don't want either, you want to be in the middle. But this applies to everything within spiritual development. So again, we could talk a lot about this, but I want to give you the direct application of it now as a building block toward the overall concept of Rosicrucian initiation. So one of the things that needs to be discerned with this concept of the Godhead creating the world and the different levels of manifest being that are referred to in the classical text is that there are beings that connect to the middle pillar. They go all the way up and all the way down. That means they connect to the highest levels of the Godhead, and they also connect all the way down to the level of the manifest creation. In the Western tradition, uh, within esoteric Christianity, this is connected to the Christ or Christic beings, or within the monotheistic traditions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they refer to them as Mikaelic beings, because Mikael is considered to be the highest of the archangels. And so one of the names that is attributed to the term Michael is that the name Mikael means who is as God. And so that idea that Mikael holds the quality of the Godhead but reduced in scale to where it can be interacted with at an archangelic level. The meaning of this is that when we hold to the middle way, perfect balance in all polarities in life, then we're on the path that takes us all the way. But through free will, 
through the mysteries that are described in the book of Genesis and in the Kabbalah and many other traditions, where through the exercise of free will, we can choose to go off to one direction or the other and get off balance. The same thing is true for certain types of higher spiritual beings who actually have the spiritual task of being somewhat polarized and pulling us one direction or another. Now the way that this got confused for the modern Western tradition is that some of the terms used in ancient times got to be confused together so they could no longer differentiate their meaning, which leads to a lot of confusion. So toward one hand, toward the left hand pillar, you have spiritual beings that don't understand or really care for the physical world. The physical world is something that seems like a place of suffering. And many of the ancient traditions of the world were heavily influenced by these beings with teachings of the physical world being an illusion, of the physical world being a place of suffering, get off the cycle of karma and reincarnation, etc. In the Western world, it was understood that these spiritual beings are advanced spiritual beings, more advanced than human beings. And they also have tremendous spiritual light. When one encounters them, one does not encounter a being of darkness. One encounters a being of tremendous light. And so the name given to the leader of this particular spiritual group was Lucifer, and these are Luciferic beings. Now, in most traditions today, this is completely confused because the term Lucifer is completely mixed up with the term Hasatan, or Satan, which is a dark being. And so all differentiation is lost. Again, this is a very deep topic talking about the consciousness and activities of these beings, and it's made doubly difficult because there's so much baggage attached to the names today that are not part of the original tradition. But that basic idea here is that to one side, you can go, even with any human being, toward a type of spiritual development where you really focus on spirit, but your physical life goes straight to hell. You know, you're not able to pay the bills, and your relationships with people suffer, and you're not taking care of business, and your life's not going that well, but you're really focused on spirit all the time, but not grounded. Now that can also lead, unfortunately, to forms of spirituality that are illusory or hallucinogenic, so that the things that are being perceived and worked with are not really real, or they're distorted through our lens in a particular way that's really not helpful. And so this is connected to what classically is referred to as the Luciferic extreme. Now on the other hand, as you might imagine, it's the exact opposite polarity. If one is connecting to spirit, but not really following the th full process of creation in matter and connecting to that, then the other is going to be deeply connected to matter. It's going to be deeply connected to the process of linking onto the physical materialization process and loving physicality. So human beings can fall into this as well by becoming completely materialistic so that we don't even believe that spirit exists. Spirit is some type of illusion that we have. There's nothing but random evolution over time through completely physical biological processes. And there is no spirit, there's nothing of that kind. So this becomes a kind of modern materialistic scientific perspective that's very sharp in some ways, but has absolutely no spiritual perception. And so for complete materialists, they fall completely into this pillar. And so we can see that type of dichotomy that's being created here and holding the balance between it, between spirituality and life in the world. Now the Aramonic aspect then took on other names and other times. The Gnostics referred to the being of Araman, or the beings of the same quality referred to as Aramonic beings, as the Demiurge. So you read all these Gnostic texts about the Demiurge, the dark lord of this earth that created the physical world. Then in Egypt, this polarity was referred to as Set, and Set was sown contrasted with Horus, and actually there would be an empowerment of the Pharaoh by both Horus and Set when the Pharaoh would take the throne. That term Set, when the Hebrew people left Egypt, led by Moses, who had been initiated in the Egyptian temples, that term Set became Ha-Setan, and so Set became Satan. Now, Ha-Satan is a Hebrew term meaning the adversary. And so it means that this is a being that has an adversarial relationship to the human being. And so that's where we then got the concept in the West of Satan. Again, this is a, a dark type of being, very different from the Luciferic beings as beings of light. Now, this idea of holding the balance between these two types of beings is something that plays out in everyday life. And it's a constant dynamic process for every human being. If we were to strip away the veil, we would see that these invisible Luciferic and Aramonic beings are influencing our consciousness at all times to go to one direction or the other, just as the beneficial beings are also connecting with us. 
And in the ancient temple science, it was understood that our connection to these beings was purely through resonance. When we think in a particular manner, when we feel in a particular manner, all of our thoughts, all of our feelings, all of our internal states have an energetic quality to them. And they will resonate like an antenna with qualities of the exact same type in the other worlds. So if we have a, a very negative materialistic thought, that will resonate us with the more aramonic beings. If we get a type of emotional striving to have only ecstatic process in our life and it's completely spiritual without ever having to do the dishes or wash the car, then that will connect us more to the Luciferic types of beings. And then, of course, things that are more of a grounded nature to the central pillar. And that's, again, a direct depiction of three different types of spiritual beings that one interacts with. Now, the problem that can come with this is that when it's stripped away from the original initiation, very straightforward context, then people can get very worked up about hindering beings and have very sensationalistic reactions to them. But it's something like uh, if you were to be told that you have 10 billion germs on your skin right now, and you do, you have billions of germs on your skin right now, but if your biological landscape is healthy, it doesn't matter, you're going to be fine. So if you don't get all freaked out about it, it's just the way things are already working before you even knew about it. We're influenced by these types of beings all the time. We are like fish that live in an ocean that don't know there's any water. These beings are surrounding us all the time, and our boundaries are actually not solid. They move through us, our consciousness, our feeling life, all the time. So that's one of the first things that would be clarified on the Rosicrucian path, is understanding these different types of influences that we come into contact with all the time. Rudolf Steiner, one of his highest values and beliefs was that human potential is at its highest when a human is free, is free thinking, free to create a free sovereign being. And Steiner was, you could say he was a Christian mystic. He uses the word Christ as the embodiment, as the ideal of this sovereign human spirit, where the human is co-creating with a higher energy. And Steiner identified two demonic forces that are essential for human development, but are in opposition to the Christ spirit. One is Lucifer, and the other is Araman, who I will be talking about today. And Araman is the spirit of materialism, of scientific reductionism, of worldly power. Araman is a being of darkness and density that wishes to harvest the souls of humanity to feed himself. So again, these darker beings are not interested in human sovereignty. Human sovereignty is contrary to their wills and how they're fed. So Araman feeds himself by separating humanity's lower energy centers from the higher centers. So he does this by creating the illusion and the belief that spirituality is not important, that spirituality is, is just a myth, and that the only thing that is real is the information that we gather through our five senses. Hence, this very dense third dimensional construct and being. Scientific reductionism essentially replaces religion in the Aramonic age. Science and materialism are our priests, essentially. These are the leaders, these are the authorities that we surrender to. And this is the world we're living in today, a world where people have no connection with their heart, no connection with their intuition, we look to the media, we look to scientists, we look to presidents, 
to find the answers. And, and this is a world that Rudolf Steiner warned about in the 1800s, and we're living it right now. This is the age of Ahriman. And again, this is happening because humanity, the higher centers, the access to higher realms is cut off. We are in our, our first three chakras, and that is the reality that we're experiencing and giving credence to. Now, the ultimate vision of Araman is coming into this world, and that is AI. When humans merge with machines, as we are seeing in this transhumanist movement, then the machine can hijack the human psyche and cut off access to higher realms completely. They're going to essentially replace that. That's another characteristic, is Araman gives you very easy answers. Araman is going to give you the answers to which you seek, and humanity will not have to do any work in and of themselves to find the truth. And that's very appealing to people when they're suffering. But again, this quest for understanding, this effort that the human soul goes through to understand what it is and its purpose and its truth, that is essential to the highest power and the highest expression of a human being. And again, Araman harvests you by giving you that easy answer and you accepting it as opposed to taking the information that's offered from the material world and then doing your own research, building your own intuition and integrating all of that and finding your own truth. So again, Araman and the Aramonic power structure is coming into play at its greatest expression in AI. If all of humanity surrenders to AI and allows a computer chip to direct their consciousness, you are surrendering your soul, you are surrendering your autonomy to Araman. And Steiner also predicted that Araman would take a body and he is here. Araman is here and he is influencing the world as we speak. I have a good idea of who he is. Some of you may also have an idea, but he's here and he is looked at as someone who is doing humanity a service. Again, this is the Aramonic deception, but the end game is to cut you off from your soul, cut you off from higher intelligence, and to surrender that to Araman.